so mean. Yeah, Maybe happen. they're trying to do that on purpose for video, but they're free. <laughs> Coming out to throw the light hammer. It was originally going to be the heavy, but upper body's still a little tight. It's also in the 90s with 95% plus humidity right now. It's a lot easier to train like a champion when the weather's nice. So any of you that have watched this vlog long enough have probably gotten pretty familiar with the music that I use. The music is um, created, recorded, performed by Chris Alonzo, who is a friend of mine from high school. Uh, we both did theater and music together. Uh, Chris, in my mind, is a brilliant artist. He's, uh, he's a playwright, and he's just created a massive mountain of content throughout his life that I think is worth checking out. But, more to the point of this vlog, Chris has started a fitness journey, so to speak. Uh, he has some goals in mind for weight loss. Just generally look better. He wants to look and feel better, and I think those are as good goals as any. He started a blog kind of to track his progress. He's an excellent writer, of course, so he's going to use that to sort of play into um, his fitness goals. And that sort of resonated with me because I make no bones about the fact that I like getting attention for what I'm doing. A big thing that helps me along in the process of you know fitness, strength conditioning, training, um, competing, all that kind of stuff, is getting feedback from other people. So to Chris, I would say that you are, you're a performer at heart, and that's what's going to motivate you at first, that your people are gonna comment on the blog, people are gonna make videos when they talk about it, people are gonna you know, give you that kind of feedback and positivity early on, but it's going to fade fast. Uh, people are going to get interested in their own stuff. They're going to move on. They're not going to be thinking about you. They're not going to be checking back in. At some point, it's going to become you alone with yourself, um, you know, running on the road, barbell, yoga mat, whatever it takes. It's going to be you alone doing that at some point. So you have to find a way to transform the positivity, the good feeling that you're getting from the feedback from other people, and you're going to have to transfer that into something internal. That's going to, at some point, you're going to have to be motivated internally. But that can come with time. Motivation is a thing that you can train, just like a muscle, just like a movement. I swear, it's just like anything else. 
And Chris, you mentioned in one of your blog posts that one of the hard things about getting on board with exercise is that it does feel ultimately meaningless. Is that you feel like you're just, as I think as you put it, you're running around in circles until you're less fat. And I get that, I do. There is a certain insanity to you know, picking things up, putting them back down, running in circles, running the same way until you get desired results. And I get that, I really do. That's sort of a more intelligent person's way of dealing with the same problem that everybody else does is that they focus on the result too much. That end result is meaningful to you because it's a confidence builder, because it makes you feel better, makes you feel like you accomplished something. But the work itself may not be there. Here's my secret. But ultimately, a lot of the things that we pursue, career-wise, hobby-wise, are meaningless. Where you find meaning, and this will sound familiar to you because you're a craftsman in terms of words, in terms of music, in terms of art, is the craft is what's important. The craft is where you find meaning. I understand that running on a treadmill, I understand that lifting a barbell, working on a machine doesn't feel artistic, but it is. There is a craft to training. There's a craft to becoming strong. There's a craft to becoming a better version of yourself. There are little things, there are minutia, there are things to learn, there are stylistic differences, there are philosophical differences. And once you dive into those and you start to appreciate those, you start to identify what is my philosophy? What's my take on the craft of fitness, of training? What is my, how do I approach the craft? That's where the meaning is found. It's that it's a new craft you can master. It's a new thing you can become an artist at, so to speak. So instead of thinking about the satisfaction of the end result, think about the satisfaction you get from the craft. Think about when you're writing. Think about the satisfaction of when the words finally fall together, when you get the rhythm right. Think about how that feels. That's how it feels when I hit a barbell movement correctly. That's the same feeling. You get the same reinforcement from that. Just like in any other craft, it doesn't happen immediately. The, the synchronicity, the beauty doesn't happen immediately. Here's how it happens. What do they say when you want to, when you want to write better? Sit down and write. It doesn't matter what it is, you sit down and write. It's the same thing with this fitness stuff. Let's say I'm gonna do something three days a week. Don't say go to the gym, don't say do yoga, don't say run, don't say lift. Just say I'm gonna do something three days a week. If it's going to the gym, you go to the gym. Even if you walk around, you touch a barbell, you maybe warm up a little bit, you stretch, and you just don't feel like it and you leave. Maybe you have a great lifting session, maybe you really kill yourself, maybe, who knows. But you do it. You go there, you do it. You're developing habit. That's all it is. It doesn't matter what you do right now. It doesn't matter what you do right now. It matters that you do it. It matters that you put your feet on the ground, you make movement towards that goal. You start momentum. It's a lot easier to go slow to fast than it is fast to faster. Now, once you've created that three times a week habit, everything you add becomes a little bit easier. Deciding, well, I wanna make the best of that three times a week, so I'm gonna find the most biggest bang for my buck or you may find something like hey last time I came I enjoyed this I'm gonna do that again or you know last time even if you're doing it at home last time I did this or last time I ran this particular trail I enjoyed it a lot more so I'm gonna do that one you're gonna find a way to make the most of your time or you may think hey you know I feel like there's a way that I could do this a little bit better or I could do a little bit more weight or I could run a little farther those are the little things that's how you develop craft so again don't worry about the meaning behind all of it think about the craft Think about how do you become better at the small things? How do you build those small things into a bigger result? How do you become an expert at what you're doing? That's the fun part. And then all of a sudden, when you focus on those things, you wake up one day, you realize that you look better, you feel better. How we doing?